criminal swing and mentioned earlier. And, and Larry, I know you've gone on and on, but maybe what's different? I know last year was a newer car, and people worry about equipment, but what, what is different with the car this year that you think will, will see or affect the race the most? Yeah, you know, even though this car, before we rolled in here a year ago, had been tested for almost two and a half years, it, it was still a clean sheet of paper. I've always said you can test until there's no more fuel, and there's no more tires left. But you do not know what you've got until you drop a green flag and there's competition <coughs> on the line with a checkered flag. And the drivers, the crews, the crew chiefs, the engineers rolled in here with no notes in their notebook. And we saw some, some gremlins, we saw some mechanical woes. Some of the best race cars were sitting in infield. Chase Briscoe, Tyler Reddick with, with broken transaxle brackets. NASCAR rectified that before you went to Daytona. Denny Hamlin was sitting over there with some power steering woes. That's continued to be worked on. But probably the most notable thing that's been changed, and I applaud NASCAR for what they've done here. Uh, you know, we had a couple of drivers that, that was under concussion protocol, most notably Kirk Busch that, that ended up retiring full time from rear impacts. And even before that, NASCAR was working on trying to figure out exactly what to do with the car. And you know, a lot of people may say, well, just take some bars out, just make some balls, bars thinner or weaker. Well, you've got 20 gallons of fuel back there and four and a half gallons of oil. You could not compromise when it comes to oil and fuel. So they started doing testing. So most notably, the difference is, is at the rear of the chassis and the bumper structure where they just basically took take, taken some bars out. They made some bars smaller. They made the walls of some of the bars thinner. And it's just where it's not as rigid. It's more forgiving. It'll have more crush, which is what they needed uh, to, to keep these doc drivers from having a hard impact when they back the car in the wall. Nothing you'll see when they're on the racetrack, but when back them in the wall, I don't think we're gonna be holding our breath quite as much. So real quick though, in a nutshell, the racing you would expect to be maybe more aggressive and with more cars and, and see- Well, I, I do, you know, we know now how more, much more durable these cars are. And to, to Regan and, and Jamie's point, they have notes in that notebook. They have a full year of notes in their notebook. They're, you still don't want to come out here and tear a race car up when you're not on eggshells worrying about tearing a race car up. And I know adding four more cars doesn't sound like a lot, but when you do it on a quarter mile racetrack, the leader last year was catching the back of the pack before lap 20, and now there's four more cars added to the field. The format is what drives the aggression. The format, 25 lap heat races, it's quick. In your face, you have to be on point from the word go. 25 laps and then it sets you up. If you don't make it out of that heat race, you're in the last chance to qualify. It's fourth and long. Now you've got to try to make it into that thing to get into the feature 150 laps for all the marbles. The format is what's going to drive the aggression. And we know nine drivers, and we're going to see some big names, trust me. Nine drivers and teams are not going to make the big dance. They're going to have to load up and go to the house early. This is Timmy Hill, driver of the 56 Toyota. Make sure to hit that subscribe button. Also check out one of those videos beside me and visit Funstretch.com for more racing content.